I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and I have nothing terribly new to add to the iPad Pro conversation. But it's such a noteworthy move, especially from the normally conservative Apple, that I wanted to share my first impressions anyway. Join me then, as I try to wrap my head and hands around one of the biggest tablets ever made. By that, of course, I mean one of the biggest tablets ever made for the mainstream. Things like Samsung's Galaxy View and the Alcatel One Touch Excess are much more appliances than mobile devices. Now, the iPad Pro might be optimized for keyboard and pencil input, neither of which we have yet, by the way, but the core of the device is a big old tablet. It comes with what you'd expect, presented exactly as you'd expect it to be presented, and the only really notable thing about the unboxing itself is the charging cable, which is quite long. I wander a bit when I'm tableting, so that's the kind of thing I appreciate. Everyone's said the same thing about the iPad Pro, and while I'd love to hit you over the head with some new and amazing revelation, the number one most noteworthy thing about the physical hardware here is that it's ponderous. The iPad Air 2 was the biggest tablet I routinely used up till now, and the iPad Pro dwarfs it. It's a 13-inch display, which doesn't sound all that big, but to get a sense of the size difference, just hold it up to a computer monitor. Here it is against the 15-inch MacBook Pro. There's really not too much difference. It's so big that certain elements seem comical in context. The Touch ID sensor appears tiny relative to the faceplate, and it takes a second to figure out the best way to unlock it. The virtual keyboard is a monster. It's really great to have this much acreage to spread your fingers out on, and it's quite accurate, but not all apps support it, kind of like the situation with the iPhone 6S Plus. And at a pound and a half, it's heavy, too. Not so heavy that you can't hold it with one hand, but heavy enough that you won't really want to. That big footprint brings some big benefits. The obvious one is the added canvas for videos and web browsing, and the display really looks good in person. But there's also the huge battery to consider. According to iFixit, it's an over 10,300 milliamp hour unit, 40% larger than the power pack on the iPad Air 2, and uh, even a hair bigger than the one on the Surface Pro 4. I'm definitely looking forward to endurance testing this one. And don't forget the four corner speakers, which from a few minutes of cursory testing seem to live up to the reputation they've earned from other reviewers. While we wait for the keyboard and pencil accessories to roll in, we'll be testing the iPad Pro as a standalone product, which at least some buyers looking to save the extra 270 bucks will no doubt also be doing. Let us know what you want to know about flying solo with the iPad Pro, and we'll do our best to answer your questions in the coming coverage. In the meantime, I'm going to go try and figure out how to be out in public with this thing without people thinking I'm looking to deliver a television. Be sure to see what our colleagues think of the iPad Pro, folks. Check out our chat with Mobile Syrup's Daniel Bader on episode 174 of the Pocket Now Weekly, and visit us at pocketnow.com for editorial and feature coverage on this mammoth monstrosity. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher, Captain Two Phones on Twitter, urging you to be a pro no matter what you're doing. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.